about the three forces that are acting onto an object and we need to find out the magnitude of the net force, the direction of the net force, the magnitude of the net acceleration and the direction of the net acceleration. I'll just make one simple correction here. It has to be an acceleration. So I'll just make Okay. So we have a mass here, an object, and three forces are acting. So this is F1 force, this is the F2 force, and this is the F3 force. And we have chosen this is an x-axis and this is an y-axis. And we can choose our own coordinate system. So for my convenience, I'm just choosing this as my x-axis and this is y-axis. And the angle of all the forces are given with respect to the coordinate system. The force is at for F1 is at 45, F2 is at 30, and F3 is at 35 degree. Now, in which direction the object will start moving? So in order to answer that, first thing we need to do is find out the direction of the net force and the magnitude of the net force. So how are we going to do that? We're going to use the, first we're going to resolve a force into two rectangular components. So let's start with this F1 force. And this is our X system, X coordinate, uh, X axis and this is our Y axis. So the X component of this force will be along this direction. It would be F1 cosine 40 degree and along Y component it would be F1 sine 40, 45 degree. So we have now two forces and we do not need this force. The same way we can resolve this into two components. This component again would be F2 cosine 30 degree and in this case the force will be downward and this would be F2 sine 30 degree. And the last we have to resolve this into two components along the this axis because this is now the angle this force would be cosine why this cosine because again remember the rule of c and c closer to the angle is always cosine so this component is closer to the angle so this would be cosine component f3 cosine 45 degree and this is further from the angle so this would be sine component sine 35 degree so all the forces is now shown in this diagram and I'll explain one more time. So we'll start with F1. Okay. The F1 has two components. F1 cosine 45 degree. Again, Y cosine. How do we know that it is cosine? Because this is the angle, which is closer. So closer to the angle is cosine. And this component will be sine component. So this one is F1 sine 45 degree, which is shown by the the red arrow now for the f2 this is f2 here f2 so again the f2 this as this angle is 30 degree so this angle so this component will be f2 cosine 30 degree and this one would be f2 sine 30 degree and always think of this one as a parallelogram okay so uh, now stop the uh, now think about yourself first how are you going to resolve this force now f3 as this angle is 35 degree this component will be cosine component which is f3 cosine 35 degree which is given here 
and this component will be f3 sine 35 degree so when all the forces has been dissolved into two components two rectangular components then life is so easy then so what are we going to do now now we're going to find out the the total forces that is acting along the x-axis and we do not need this forces now we do not need this force we do not need this force because this forces has been now resolved into two components x and y components so along x-axis along the positive x-axis we have three forces which is f1 cosine 45 degree we have f2 cosine 30 degree and f3 sine 35 degree these three forces these three these two forces now acting along the positive x-axis and this is acting along the negative x-axis so what is the total force then this force plus this force minus this force that is the total force f1 cosine 45 f2 cosine 30 degree and minus f3 sine 35 degree and we know the mag uh, the magnitude of f1 this is 60 newton so writing down the 60 newton cosine 45 degree f2 is 50 so 50 and f3 is 40 newton and and once we do the math just plugging all the values of cosine 45 cosine 30 and 35 what you get the net resultant force along the x-axis this is the total net force along the x-axis is 62.79 newton the same way let's find out what is the total force along the y-axis how are we going to do that so along the y-axis again we have three forces which is f1 sine 45 plus f3 cosine 35 minus f2 sine 30 degree f2 sine 30 degree is negative because it is acting along the negative y direction that's what exactly what i have done here f1 sine 45 minus f2 sine 30 degree plus f3 cosine 35 degree so again once once you plug in all the numbers what you get is this force fy is 50.2 newton so we have now find out the total f um, x component and total y component so if i have to make life a little easier so what i can do now so let's say this is a box so the total x component is this is the force x component and this is the total f y component this is f x and this is the f y that's how all the forces now can be resolved by can be simply used now as an fx and f y force so the total force the total force can be now written as a 62.79 that's the x component i vector what is the i vector means that is the this force is now acting along the uh, x direction that's what this is telling you this gives the direction or the component and the y component is 50.2 and j vector j vector is telling you this force is acting along the y direction and this is read as j hat or j cap so this gives the unit uh, the the unit vector along the y direction and this is the unit vector along x direction so we found out the total the force now let's find out the, the magnitude of the force the total magnitude so what if the two forces are acting um, along x direction and along y direction then the total force can be given by by so let's say in this case this is fx force and then we can now write down fy force just by this just like that fy then this gives you the the total resultant force all right this is fx force and this is fy force and this gives you the total net force 
and if you look at this it just looks this is a right angle triangle and this is the the hypotenuse so by pythagoras theorem the the net force can be given by fx squared plus fy squared and we already have calculated fx is 62.79 and fy is 50.2 and if you just do the math what you will get is 80.4 newton now let's talk about the direction how do we find out the direction the direction this will be your the direction this is the direction now now let's call this is an angle theta so how do we find out the theta so if you look into this triangle into this triangle the tangent of theta the tangent of theta would be rise over run a rise in this case is fy and the run is fx that's exactly what I have done here. Tangent of theta is Fy over Fx. Fy is given 50.2 and Fx is 62.79. And if you solve for theta using a calculator, you will get 38.6 degree. So that means the object, this object will move at this angle along this direction. That's that's the direction the object starts moving if so we under this forces you see three forces are acting on an xy plane and the object would move at an angle 38.6 degree so closer to this angle so the object will move along this angle okay along this way and now it is fairly simple to calculate the net acceleration the magnitude of the net acceleration the acceleration is given by force per unit mass force divided by the mass the force the net force the total force is 80.4 and the mass of this object is given which is 20 kilogram the mass is given 20 kilogram mass so the acceleration would be 4.02 and the direction so you see now this equation now direction of the uh, this is the direction of the acceleration okay so you see that this is the equation force is equal to mass time acceleration and mass is a scalar quantity so the f the direction of the acceleration is the same direction as the force and uh, the angle would be 38.6 degree exactly this angle so the object would the force would be move, uh, acting along this direction and so is the acceleration so the system will move along this way 38.6 degree angle so that's it for this particular problem and again if you have any questions write down your question in the comment section below and if you want me to do another problem onto the superposition of principle or many forces acting onto an object, you just write down the questions in the comment section below. And at the end, do not forget to like, share and subscribe the channel. Thank you very much.